Welcome to Nico Props, I'm Chris Fry, also known as Nicodemus. So uh, today we're going to be going through um, the Muse and testing for uh, cutting, also known as vector cutting. So um, we're going to do the test materials from the Full Spectrum site and today we're going to be working with cardboard. This is just 3mm cardboard here. Uh, it's also important while you're doing laser cutting and that kind of thing to make sure that you've got the proper safety equipment on hand. Uh, it pays to have a CO2 um, fire extinguisher to hand, especially when working with things like cardboard, as they can be quite flammable. Um, also, I've been using uh, this Dirt Devil as well for cleaning the bed, which is quite handy. Um, so those are the two things that you could be getting uh, to, to go with your laser cutter to help you keep your bed clean and, uh, and for safety. So let's get into uh, actually doing the test cuts and testing the materials and the settings uh, that we need and logging and that kind of thing. Okay, so let's go and get the um, test files from Full Spectrum Laser. You can hear the uh, my lasers buzzing away in the background behind me already. So we're ready to go with that. That's already started up. So we're going to go to the Full Spectrum Laser website. And uh, the materials are under, the test material is under the lessons, under 101 lessons scroll down you've got all these beginner lessons intermediary lessons which you can go and have a look at as well but for quick reference make a right out of the box material test file and we can click on this as a link and on here it gives you step by steps and the downloads for those test files uh, which is a PDF um, you, uh, there was also um, a zip file with other assets in them. I downloaded the zip file. I'm going to use the PDF in this one. So I've already got the file. So the steps are uh, after you've bought the file, um, you, you need to align it and um, you know adjust the size of the wish. You can do raster engraving and those kind of things. Now they've got some settings here as well, some basic settings. So what I'm going to do is um, is we're going to load up that test file. So I'm going to go to my um, retina engraved, which is here, and it should give me a picture of what was there before. So let me name my file first by clicking on, I cancel that. If I click on the untitled, I can name that. So I'm going to name this cardboard uh, test rename okay so now i'm going to switch over to the um my other camera to show you the bed of the laser but the cardboard in and that kind of thing so what i've got here for you is uh is some corrugated cardboard just some uh, an old shipping box or something like that i have already played around with it now the issue i've got is that i didn't save my settings so we're going to do this again so we're going to open up the machine put it into the middle of the bed there, unlock my gantry so I can move the head, he says, unlock my gantry, move that over, get my focusing billet, unscrew here at this side here so that you can move the head up and down, put the focusing billet underneath and drop it down so it's just touching on the top, resting on the top of the focusing billet. Screw that back in so it's good and tight. You don't want this to slip while it's running. And remove the billet, like that, out of the way. Uh, and then we're, we're in the middle of the piece, which is good for the camera settings. And I'm gonna lock my gantry. And it's gonna move back to the home position so that it can work out where it is on the bed and then it should zip back to the point that it was a minute ago. Like that. Okay, so let's close this, go over to the, uh, the PC again, and we'll load the files. Over at the PC, um, we're gonna load up the test files. So what I wanna do first though, is I actually want to capture the bed now I've aligned it. 
So I can at this point measure the height of the material so I can enter a new height, which is great if you've got uh, an object that isn't flat or something like that. You can press measure height and it tells me that the measurement is uh, 20. I'm not really sure what that actually means, but I can then press continue and it's going to take several pictures of the bed. So let's let it do that. You can see it moving up and taking those pictures and it's going to stitch those together into a more seamless picture. This preview is obviously not great. There we go, there's our piece of cardboard on the bed. Okay. Now if I hold control and click, because at the moment the, the laser is up here, you can see by the little red dot, if I hold control and click on the bed, I can make it go to the piece of cardboard. And that's where the laser is right now. Okay. Now to load my test file, which I've already downloaded, I've got it here, materialtest.pdf. I drag that and drop it onto the bed. Now it's going to ask me what I want to do. So I can import everything, or I can import the raster only, or the vector only. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to look at engraving the cardboard. I want to cut it. Now, cutting is vector, raster is engraving. So we only want the vector in this instance, because I'm only going to cut. So I'm going to open that. And it's got up in the corner it places it up here and I can grab that drag it onto my my piece and you can see these little handles on the corners will allow me to resize in different directions and this one allows me to do a rotation of the piece I'm not going to rotate it I'm going to drag it so that it's resized bigger so that you guys can see it a bit better let's make it about that big okay now this particular drawing has many, many, many colors on here, okay? So we've got this black area. So we want to engrave the black area. If we see at the side here, this side panel comes in and out. If yours isn't showing, click on the little arrow. And we've got a lot of colors in here. Now, it shows us the highlighted ones in here. I seem to have zoomed in. Uh, the highlighted ones in here that are actually the ones that are on here. So we've got We've got black, which is that outside border. If I click off of that, you can see that the black's on the outside, the yellow, we've got pink, kind of red color, green, blue. So the black, we want to make sure that that's actually going to cut it out. So I'm going to leave that at 100 and a speed of 100 and current bars of one. Now the blue, which is the bottom line, I'm going to choose what I want to be able to do on that. Now bearing in mind on the website, on the website, we've got all these settings. Now I'm doing cardboard. Now mine's three millimeters. So this is um, basically uh, three three sixteenths of an inch, which is four and a half millimeters in, in European. So this is going to be a bit thicker, um, which is fine. We'll go back to here. So we've set this 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 blue line. We've set to their settings of raster. Sorry, uh, vector power of fifty and sorry a power of 50 speed is 85 according to their settings and the current is 100 percent okay now we could adjust this as well so we can say actually we'll do the speed at 85 for this next the, for the red one here as well but actually i'm going to try 45 and a current of that and then maybe over here I want to do 85 again and uh, a current of or a power, power of 40. Let's try that out. And for the yellow, let's try 85 and a current of 35. Okay. And let's try for the green 85 and 30. Okay, so I think that's all the ones that are highlighted that I've got filled in here, which it is. Okay, I can see the position and the size of the actual thing, so it's just over two and a half inches in size, which is pretty good. Um, so what I need to do now, the first thing I need to do, if I then, if I then close that, I can also close this object here as well so that I can just see the bed open it that way you can see all the different things that are in there we've only got one thing at the moment uh, 
this button here runs the perimeter. Okay, so we can run the perimeter of the job, which is going to tell us if it is close to the um, the actual object on the bed and whether it's where I want to cut. So I'm going to run the perimeter. Just going to run the head around so we can see the little dot on the actual material if it's actually where I want it to. So let's go over to the machine. So we can see that this is in a good position on the actual material. So I'm happy to go and cut that now. So let's run this. I've got uh, the lid is shut, the water is on, I've got my fan on, and the fans are going to kick in for the extraction as soon as we start the job. And that's when it might get a little bit noisy. So we stop the perimeter. Okay. And then uh, we can estimate the time of the job. How long is this going to take to run? This is going to take 36 seconds. This is going to be pretty quick. Okay. Now I can run it and I can play it. So we'll go, we'll press play on this and I'm going to bring up the machine at the side over here somewhere as well for us to have a look at at the same time when we can see that it's moving on here and it's actually running on the machine. So let's go on this one. first problem there, as we can see, is that the material has actually dropped, which is not great. So maybe what we're going to do on the next version of this, is we'll move the layers around so that um, they can uh, they can cut properly, <laughs> the proper settings before it's dropping. And that's that done, okay? So I'm going to move the head with the retina in grey. out of the way of our piece, open the lid. I can see that it's cut all the way around the outside with no scorching, but that's using a lot of power. Okay, so what's actually cut? So this is cut, this is cut, and it all fits together like that. And we can see that that's cut, that's cut, that's cut, that's, that's cut. In fact, all of the settings cut. So, hang on a minute. If they've all cut, why why did they all cut? Do we, are we using too much power? Quite probably. Let's take the pieces out. We don't need these now. We'll put our cardboard back in. And we'll close the lid. Put that down. We already know that that's focused at the top of this material, so that's okay. So we're back at the machine. So what I need to do now, being that I've just cut this out, is that um, I need to move this, but of course I can't see where the hole is. So let's take pictures of the bed again. course the material because I took it out and I put it back in it's going to move position as well so as soon as this refreshes it'll probably not be in the same place see not in the same place so we can now grab hold of this and move this over to here now we said about moving this this layer we can actually drag this layer and move it down like so so that we can change the order in which things are burnt in so let's actually move our ones up so that it's easier for us to work on I want that one to be last. I move this one up to here. I'm going to put them all at the top. I'm just going to move them all up so it's a bit tidier for me. <laughs> like that. So we can see them a little bit better. Um, let's put these back into the correct order as well. So that was there. Okay, but now we've got the black at the bottom. So that's now going to happen last. Whereas before we saw it happen first. Now we know that it cut at 30, right? At a speed of 85. But what if I put in 25 on here? So my keyboard actually works. Um, 20, uh, 15, 
and we're getting into the realms of being low here so 10 and 5 now I'm not expecting 10 and 5 to actually cut I'd be very surprised if they actually do so uh, we can run these and we can see how long this is going to take to cut we do the estimate here it takes 36 seconds we kind of knew that already so let's run the perimeter of the job just to make sure that it's actually in the correct position Yes, it is in the correct position, so we can stop the perimeter check and then we can now run the job. So we can see already by changing the layer order that, um, that it's actually cutting the other pieces first, so it's going to be much more efficient. And we can see that one square has fallen down but the other hasn't, so it's probably not cut all the way through that. And remember, on our black layer, we're using 100% power and 100% speed. So we know that that's going to cut. We can even see a little bit of flame bursting out the side there. Um, it's always good to have a fire extinguisher on standby for this kind of thing because you don't know if it's going to, um, to catch fire or not. So I'm going to move the head again with Retina Engrave, the control click. So that's out of the way. And then lift the lid. Uh, we can see it's already fallen now. I'm going to lift the main piece out, get that out of the way. I can see that that bottom line, which is our light blue line, definitely cut through that. It cut through on the middle line, as we can see. It didn't cut all the way through on this bottom line. So that middle line looks like our best setting so far. That's cut nearly all the way through. We can see it's a bit perforated, not quite through. So that middle one or the bottom one is our best bet. So let's go back to the machine and have a look at what was the best best one for us. Okay, so let's take these parts out. So we're back at the machine now. So I'm going to select this and the, that bottom line in the middle one is the ones that cut the best. So 20% power, 25% power on the blue line or 20% power. So now 20% and 85 speed is the best bet. That's fantastic. So what I can do now, I can make a note of this for the next time I use this material. Now, on uh, on, the, on this, it says to basically, you know, this, this kind of setup on the website where they've documented, they even give you uh, a, a log sheet uh, material test. And they've also got a spreadsheet as well, which is new from when I did it. I created my own spreadsheet on Google Sheets because it's free. Um, here's my sheet, let's bring this over. And if I go to my paper and card tab, I can see I don't have my three millimeter in there. So three millimeter per, can't spell corrugated. I'll correct the spelling in a minute. Corrugated cardboard. Um, go back to my regular engrave. What was my best? So my speed was 85, 20 and 100. So speed, 85, power, 20 and current was 100 okay passes one we haven't done a raster so i'm not going to fill this side in i like to keep raster and vector in either side um so i've got those settings so i know what those settings are now for the next time i want to run this piece so what i can then do is i can go into here get i'm not going to need this now now i've got those settings i can go i want a new project and I want to actually create something within the project here or I could drag in a illustrator file or something like that if I want to cut that but let's just create something from inside here uh, I'm gonna to go to shapes this is retina engraves um, editing studio it's quite basic it's all right if you want to do some basic things We've got some objects in here a few, few exciting objects do the skull I like doing the skull so I'm gonna click on that I'm gonna draw my skull and hold shift to keep it proportioned if I let go of shift look it'll let me squish it around like that and of course that doesn't look right if I then press shift it snaps it back to being proportioned and I can size it proportionally so I'm gonna make it about that big that's fantastic and then gonna export this to retina engraver and obviously you could put things like type and other things in uh, let's put some type in. Yeah, let's put some some type in. Eco, eco, 
huge bombs. Um, let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, now I haven't actually messed around too much with, with this, so we'll see what actually happens. I've done my, my editing in uh, inside. So let's make that white, the inside of the text white. Um, seems to have fill color. Okay. I said on that. <laughs> ah, stroke width. Here we go. So let's make that. So the stroke width is three. And if we switch those over, that might be too high. All right, so you grab hold of it with your mouse and drag it up and down. So let's do a stroke width of one so it cuts the letters out. Uh, make that a little bit bigger. Maybe I want to select the skull. Position those, eco props, like that. Okay, now let's export that to Retina Engrave. So that's now fully filled in. So because it's filled in, it's going to try and do the, um, the drawing. I can see here I've got a vector, which is my lines here, and I've got a drawing, which is the fill colors. Now I don't want it to do any engraving, so I can choose to delete that fill, and now all I've got is the outlines, okay? Highlight all of those, drag that onto my piece, but of course I've done some, some other stuff in here as well. So maybe I want to take a picture of the bed again to make sure that I'm aligning it onto the cardboard properly. So we're just going to have to wait for this to do a little bit of uh, scanning through and acquiring of the images. let the, the, the bed refresh okay so let's resize this so it actually fits onto our piece a bit better let's put that up there as close as I can get it to the edges without it getting in the way doesn't matter if I overlap here because look that's blank space anyway so let's go to here make it as big as I possibly can on the material that we have Okay, now, this is the important bit. I'm quite close to that edge, so I want to make sure when I do my perimeter that that laser is happening inside that edge and also it doesn't go outside of these edges, otherwise I'm going to have to resize. So let me run the perimeter of that. And we can see that that's going around the outside. I'm going to go over to the other camera. And we can see that uh just about that that is within the boundaries of where we are going so I'm going to stop the head there how long is this going to take me this is going to take one minute and 38 seconds okay that's quite a long time I don't want you guys to wait around for that so what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the size of that a bit like that uh, how long will that take one minute 17 so that's quite a complicated shape so Reduce that even more. Probably about that. Move it into the middle a bit. 108. I'm not going to mess around anymore. Let's just cut that as is. Um, actually, I'm going to make that bigger. And what we do is we speed up the footage instead. Quick time check. 1 minute 27. That'll do. Um, move that up just a tad. Like that run the perimeter, do another quick check to make sure I haven't put it in something stupid. It's a good idea to run these perimeter checks because um, people have complained that the camera is not accurate and I think the latest update has made it a bit better. Uh, I did also find that that's not um, particularly accurate either, but um, we'll see. So I'm going to now start the burn and we go over to the other camera.
I've got no idea why it's doing two passes on the letters there. The only explanation for that is it must have the letters in there twice for some reason. Must be the way the raster works. So that's that done. I'm going to move the head out of the way. Control click again. Let's open this up. And I can see that that is perfectly cut out. Now I could use that as a stencil spray paint over the top of it maybe or something like that um, take the skull out that is perfectly formed absolutely no problems there at all um, there's no scorching on it at all there's no scorching on the edges you're going to get a bit of black on your fingers because essentially it is burning the actual the cardboard so you might want to wipe this over with a cloth if you're going to give it to children or something like that but you could use that for your halloween decorations quite easily these Fine little letters here could be used in card, card making, crafting, that kind of thing. Um, something I have found that's useful, you'll get little bits and pieces that will fall between the actual uh, the mesh. Like there, I can't actually get that out. So, I have myself a dirt devil. Not a problem. Now I don't have anything in my bed, and if I needed to, I could lift this out and clean it. It's a handy little tool to have kicking around while your laser cutter to be able to clean those little bits out so you can get on with what you need to do. So that was vector cutting on the Muse and testing of the materials and testing the settings for the materials. Thank you very much for watching. You can subscribe up here and uh, the, the playlist for the other Muse videos is just here. Um, I'll also include a, uh, a video here for um, my, my project for the Ed209 project.